Welcome to Cooking on the Kenai. Today I'm going to show you how to make marshmallow cream fudge. What's really nice about this fudge is you can change it just by changing the type of chip that you're using and the type of nut that you're using or candy that you put in your fudge. Before you begin to make your fudge, please make sure that you have lined your pan. You take a piece of foil and make sure that it's in your pan really well and fold the edges over. This makes it easier to take it out and cut it later. Lightly grease your foil. You can choose to use a 13 by 9 pan or you may choose to use a 9 by 9 pan. In my pot, I have three-fourths of a cup of butter. To that, I am going to add two-thirds of a cup of evaporated milk and three cups of sugar. I'm going to turn on my burner to about medium to medium high. I'm going to stir this until my mixture comes to a boil. This will take a little bit, so I'll be back soon. As you can see, my butter has all melted and it's getting to where it's got little tiny bubbles in it, so it's just about to boiling. One of the things I forgot to mention is you have to stir this constantly, and you need to make sure that you stir in all the corners and cover the whole bottom of the pot so that you don't end up burning your milk and sugar. Once it comes to a boil, you are going to boil and stir this for four minutes. As you can see right now, I'm starting to boil. So I will set my timer for four minutes. I have about 40 seconds left until my candy has been boiling for four minutes. I put out a hot plate so that I can put my pan on there when I stir in my marshmallow cream and chips. I'm making chocolate fudge. You can choose to make chocolate, peanut butter, butterscotch, mint, or vanilla fudge depending on what chip you use. You can also add all sorts of different things to make your fudge unique walnuts, peanuts, pecans, or candy canes to vanilla mint fudge makes a great peppermint fudge. There goes my timer. If you are temping this, it would be at 234 degrees. I'm pulling it off my stove and to this I am going to stir in my chocolate chips so I can get those melted and a seven ounce jar of marshmallow cream. I added a whole bag of chips, which is 12 ounces. One of the things you have to watch if you make peanut butter fudge is that the peanut butter chips that you can purchase are only 10 ounces. So sometimes you need to add more depending on how much peanut butter flavor you like in your fudge. Okay, so you need to stir this until you get it all incorporated. Make sure that you have all the chips melted and all the marshmallow cream stirred in evenly. This takes a minute, as you can see. If you wanted a marbled looking fudge, you could leave some of the streaks in your fudge. Make sure that you have all of those chips melted before you add your nuts because you can't see the chips once you've added your nuts. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's one chip. 
mist. Our family likes fudge with nuts. So I am adding a cup and a half of chopped nuts. We like more nuts than fudge. And to that, I am adding a teaspoon of vanilla. Get that all mixed in. I sometimes add a pinch of kosher salt to my fudge because salt brings out the flavor of any sweet product. Pour this into your pan. And spread it out evenly. This needs to cool for a couple of hours or until you can put your hand on the bottom of the pan before you take it out. I will be back and show you how to take it out of here and cut it really nicely. Hi, my candy has now cooled enough for me to take it out of the pan. So you lift up the edges of the foil, put it on a cookie sheet, take the sides down, and then you can cut your fudge into the desired size of pieces that you would like. I like to use a chef's knife so that I can cut it in one smooth stroke. I'm going to cut this in half, in half again, so I'm getting eight pieces out of each strip of my fudge. Fudge, a nice treat anytime. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you try your own variety of fudge. Have a great day.